All right, ladies, if we're all set, I think we'll go ahead and get started. Looks like the majority of our attendees have joined us and certainly as more attend, we will invite them in as well. Well, again, welcome to today's Women's Mentoring Program. Whether you're a first time attendee or returning with us, we're happy to start the day with you. I'm Dionne Neubauer, Director of the Chamber of Commerce, and today's program is focused focused around one's personal resiliency plan. Our interge intergenerational panel will share their personal strategies for building physical, emotional, and mental reserves that you can draw on under especially stressful circumstances. Today's program topic was created with the help of Julie Brown, who is recently retired and has been a past panelist and a moderator as well. You'll hear from her in just a moment. Our program today is meant to be a conversation as if we are all gathered together in a living room. Generally, we're at the Birch Haven Clubhouse, but today we're virtual with nearly 100 people joining us this morning. So again, a great start to the day. If during the program you have any questions or comments, please submit them in the chat area. And Julie, myself, and Emily Young, a, and one of my teammates, will be monitoring that area. A couple of housekeeping notes. We encourage you to keep your cameras on. However, we do ask that you mute your microphone. So if you can do a double check of that, a particular button this morning at this time, we'd appreciate that. The program will last till about 9 a.m. We also encourage you to connect with each other, the panelists one-on-one, -on -one, or being part of our newly created Facebook group. In this group, as well as the through the Chamber's newsletter and other social media outlets, will keep you informed about the next Women's Leadership Luncheon. And that will be scheduled here in the middle of May with Maria White with Inclusive Inclusity about creating a community of belonging. And then our next mentoring program will be held in July. Isn't it great to think of July and summer, especially when we have snow in the forecast today. So at this time, I would like to turn it over to Julie Brown to help introduce our facilitator and panelist. Julie. Good morning. Thanks, Dion. Thanks for joining us this morning. I hope this is a wonderful addition to your um, career and your personal life. This morning, my Facebook message or memories, I, the one came up from 11 years ago today. I attended a women's mentoring uh, connection event at Birch Haven and just thought it was the greatest. So this has been happening for a long time. And I know personally, I've received a lot of benefit from it. So this year, as we thought of themes, we really tried to uh, focus on we have just, we are living through a global trauma together, as Bobby Beale told us at the, our last um, event. And, you know, our lives are blended, you know, the boundaries are down, work and home and schooling and all those things. So we want to be very mindful of that this year and take, you know, remind you to take care of yourself and stay strong. So that's what today's program's about is building resiliency and some local examples. And so now I get the, the pleasure of turning over to to Jenny Williams. Jenny's title is Chief Culture and Transformation Officer at Family Resource Center. Um, if you don't know Jenny, um, you need to figure out a way to do it. She's, uh, she's just a wonderful human being, a great uh, mental health clinician, and I had the uh, honor of having her be my boss for a year and a half. So I'm going to turn it over to Jenny, and I'm seriously, if you don't know Jenny yet, you really should know, get to know her. So it's all yours, Jenny. Wow, thanks, Julie. How do I compete with that <laughs> tee up? Um, it's really exciting and a pleasure to be with everybody this morning and looking forward to the conversation. I think, um, you know, the opportunity to talk about the topic of how we've adapted and overcome some of the challenges of the last year is validating for all of us and also empowering at the same time as we go through the conversation today to hopefully learn some new ideas and some new techniques for each and every one of us. So I thought that we would start this morning by having the panelists introduce themselves and with that introduction, I'm going to throw out a question. And as you do your introduction, I'd like for each of the panelists to identify what was your personal superpower 
as we've moved throughout the different phases of the pandemic. And so let's start with Susan Bunn. Good morning. So um, I'm in banking. I am uh, assistant vice president, uh, client relationship officer at Citizens National Bank, which is basically just a fancy title for branch manager who will be transitioning to treasury management. Um, and I've been in banking 15 years. Um, as far as identifying my personal superpower, I did stay connected to different groups like Bible studies on Zoom, um, uh, as well as uh, I finished our uh, Hancock leadership during the um, pandemic. So I was able to stay connected with that. Um, and just connecting with my family who is close to me, I didn't um, distance myself from them and um, just making sure that I contacted them constantly. My sister is a licensed counselor and she's been a good resource for me. So just having resources that helped me throughout that time. Thanks, Susan. So next, let's go to Sarah Sable. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Sarah Sable. I work at Hancock County Juvenile Court. I deal with um, parents who have lost custody of their uh, children due to substance use issues and uh, students who uh, do not go to school. Um, I'm also an avid amateur endurance athlete and ultra marathon runner. Um, I earned the title of ultra marathon runner during COVID. Um, my marathon in April of last year was canceled, so I decided to run it by myself. 26.2 um, miles by yourself is a little bit uh, lonely and daunting. Um, and then I uh, competed in a 24 hour ultra marathon in September of last year. Um, and completed 80.903 miles um, in the 24 hour period. So um, I think that my personal superpower during um, uh, shutdown was that um, I'm not afraid to fail and in failure, I learn um, and in learning, I succeed. So um, failure is my greatest superpower. Thanks, Sarah. So Tasha Dimling. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Tasha Dimling. I'm born and raised in Finley, Ohio. I am a donor engagement officer at the Community Foundation and love my job. My personal superpower during the pandemic was the power and peace of nature. If I needed to be grounded or inspired, I went outside. <laughs> I went to the water and the woods to rejuvenate and recharge. When the walls of the pandemic and the stay at home order uh, started closing in, I broke free by going outside, breathing the fresh air and soaking in the sun. Um, and there was one time that I was canoeing and nature showed me how to be in the pandemic, which was to be like a river and go with the flow. <laughs> Thank you. Great. And last but certainly not least, Sarah Miley. Hello, everyone. I'm Sarah Miley. I'm the volunteer coordinator at the United Way of Hancock County. Um, I have two children. My son is now a freshman, and I can hardly believe that. And my daughter's in sixth grade. Um, I've lived in Finley gosh, I think about 15 or 16 years now. And I'd say my personal superpower, Tasha, I'm surprised I didn't run into you out on the water because <laughs> um, I found that it was very important to have, like my faith I felt was very important. I tried to continue staying connected with our church and doing online, online services, but I found that it was very important to continue to get outside. And a lot of the time I was doing that with my kids because I think they needed to get outside as well. Um, and we had a lot of adventures at Riverbend and out in the woods and even took up kayaking during the pandemic. Um, 
So that's a new thing that, you know, um, thinking about trying new things, that's, that's another thing that's important when you have a lot of things taken away from you. I think it's important to try to build in other areas. So we were a little nervous, you know, it's hard to figure out how to transport those things. And am I doing this right? Am, am I safe? We even had a few issues where we were not super safe on the water, but we learned. <laughs> so I just think it's very important to um, try new things and get outside. So thank you all for sharing. So some of the things that I kind of noticed is that everybody had different ways in which they exercise their superpowers. But some of the key things that I, I pulled out of some of those comments that everybody made was connection, being comfort with failure, to seek power and peace in the circumstances that we're in, and to build new and to seek adventure. And I think that those uh, statements are really a, a, a nice segue into the word resilience, which the idea of building our personal resiliency plan. But I just wanted to share some of the definitions I found of resilience. I think we all kind of have a an idea of what that is, but some of the definitions I found described resilience as the capacity to recover quickly from difficulties or the process of adapting well in the face of adversity, tragedy, trauma, threats, or significant stress. And then one of the definitions I found just described it as toughness. So I'm curious from the panelist perspective, as you hear some of those definitions, you know, in what ways that resonates with you and how you experience the pandemic. And I'm going to just go in the order of the pictures I see this time. <laughs> so Sarah, Miley, you're um, at the top of my picture. So do you want to start with that question? Sure. Um, you know, as I think back over the pandemic, um, I remember feeling just really nervous about everything. It, it was such a strange feeling between, hey, this is kind of nice. I get to be home with my kids and we're all together. There was kind of that aspect of it looking on the positive, but then there was, wow, it sounds like it's very dangerous and people are really sick and they're dying. I mean, there was such a two-sided coin there to what was happening. Um, so I feel like as far as staying resilient, it, it was, I think for a lot of us learning that since we've never had to deal with something like this before, like learning how to cope with all the, I mean, all the new technology that we were all dealing with and we're still dealing with. Um, so I, I don't know, I, I feel like I started looking around for other things to do. Like I mentioned the kayaking and I, I was also having a big transition because of my new job. I started in March and it was interesting because I thought, oh no, how am I gonna run a volunteer center? We can't even go out. But it was very inspiring that a lot of people started calling into the United Way or emailing and saying, how can I help? Um, so that was very inspiring for me. And I ended up volunteering myself. I helped out at City Mission in the kitchen. So I guess here's an example of trying another new thing. Um, and I would go with a couple friends and just, I think, you know, when challenges arise or you're not feeling happy with things that are going on in your life, it can be, it, volunteering really can change your perspective. Like when you're able to go out and help someone else, your life maybe doesn't look so bad, or you can forget about your problems, at least for a little while while you're feeling good about helping someone else or learning some new skills along the way. So that was kind of a roundabout answer, but. <laughs> no, I think that that's great. And I think you bring up a, an excellent point too, that sometimes when we're stuck in um, the, the muddiness of our own situations, whether that's fear, dealing with the pandemic or some other type of life stressor, sometimes giving back to others 
is a powerful way to, you know, have a little bit of a break from what we're personally experiencing. So thanks for sharing that. So, you know, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna shift to another question, I think, because you brought up a, a really powerful uh, statement about learning and uh, adapting and when things change. And I'm curious, and next I'm gonna call on uh, Tasha to maybe share a little bit about how um, your superpower of being in nature and um, finding that power and peace provided you some of that balance day to day. Thank you. Yes. It just, any time that I got stressed, I would get in my car and I would drive out to the reservoir and just soak it all in. What was nice is that with the stay-at-home order and social distancing and things like that, nature wasn't taken away. And so I still had my outlets of fishing, which provides great zen for me. Everything just washes away when I am fishing. And so it really was helpful that I was able to engage in all my outdoor activities to maintain that balance. Another thing that I did was create my own personal oasis in my backyard, which was simply a chair, a little table, and then a blanket that was hanging at my back door so that any time I just needed some peace, I would grab my blanket, go out to my chair in my backyard, and just have five minutes of being present with myself. The phone was off, and again, everything was able to wash away, and I had balance back. Thank you. Thank you. So Sarah Sable, did you identify with any of those definitions related to resilience? Yes. So um, with um, just before the pandemic hit, I was in the middle of the Systems of Care Leadership Academy. And Jenny, um, you were my mentor with developing my personal brand um, and really developing a mantra for myself when I found myself in um, situations where I didn't know how to continue going on. Um, grit is a very big um, word that I use for myself and to identify myself. Um, I know that I can persevere through difficult things for long periods of time. Um, and when that happens, that's when the growth happens. And with growth, you have gratitude. Um, to bring you back into the grit of having to persevere again. Um, so grit, growth, gratitude is my personal mantra uh, that I created under my personal brand. And um, definitely those three simple words are something that I can repeat to myself when I find myself in these situations where I don't know if I can continue on. Um, when it's, you know, two o'clock in the morning and I'm still running and I still have eight hours to go. Um, I know that negative self-talk means that I have two enemies that I'm up against. So if I have positive self-talk of grit, growth, gratitude, that will make me continue on. Great. Thanks. And I want to switch to the topic that has come up a lot during the pandemic, and that being um, associating the pandemic with grief and loss. And you know, one of the definitions that I really like associated with grief is that it is the conflicting feelings caused by an end of or change in a familiar pattern of behavior. And I want to start. Um, with Sarah Bunn and perhaps sharing with us, like whether it was during the pandemic or um, another personal situation that maybe you've encountered in your life, how you put into practice some of the things you mentioned, like connection and gathering resources and seeking input from others to adapt to that change and that, you know, what had been a familiar pattern of behavior. Sure. Um, well, you know, adapting is always a major um, key when you're dealing with grief. And 
um, loss. I lost a son five years ago and I have five children. I hope, sorry if I cry, but um, it's, all, it's always there. That grief is always there when you lose someone. Um, but it's, it was about staying connected, like you said. I connected with my sister, with other people that were grieving. Um, my church sent out um, these grief books that I read through that did, that did help me. Um, and just, you know, trusting in God. I have a, a faith in God. And so daily devotions was a big part of that because um, I just felt like God spoke, spoke to me every day. There were milestones, you know, throughout the, my loss, like, you know, a month, uh, a Christmas, a birthday that you have to get through. And it was just about, again, connecting with my family, with other people who were going through the same thing, um, who had had loss and giving insight and just basically being able to share those things, you didn't even have to um, change what you were doing and do what they did because everyone's grief is different. But being able to share that and hear their story and understand that there's people in this that are just like you and they're going through the same thing was very, um, well, it just affected me and helped me. So um, it was just staying connected with people who understood, who would listen to me because sometimes, you know, as time went on, people didn't want to bring up my son anymore, didn't want to ask how I was doing because they were afraid I would start crying and I would I'd be upset. And yeah, you still want to talk about your loved one and you still want to talk about where you're at in that process. So actually, you know, being able to verbalize and connect and communicate was probably what helped me. Thank you. Thank, yeah, thank you for sharing that. So I'm curious if for each of the panelists, did you know throughout some of those um, times of challenge in your life or even during the pandemic, that the things that you were doing, whether that was seeking connection, whether it was being in nature, the exercise, the, the service to others, if you were mindful in those moments that actually what you were doing was building your own resiliency. And I'm going to go back and let's start with uh, Sarah Sable. Um, yes, the simple answer to that question is yes, absolutely. Um, I'm not sure if anybody's familiar with Colin O'Brady. He is the first man who crossed the, uh, the continent of Antarctica by himself. Um, when he was asked why he, he does these great things, um, he explains that he lives life like a pendulum, knowing that his saddest, uh, most deepest uh, failures means that he's gonna have amazing successful days, um, just like a pendulum slings. So going after extreme um, goals and uh, not even knowing if you're going to make it there um, is exactly what I try to do every day. Um, knowing that on the darkest, deepest, um, saddest days that I feel like I can't even walk another step, um, it will propel me to even greater achievements where I will feel um, like I could conquer the world. Um, so just understanding that. And I, I think for, for per, me personally, that is my, my greatest um, reflection with my resilience. Mm -hmm. So I think you bring up that really powerful idea about not being afraid of failure. And I think a lot of us, I'll, you know, <laughs> self include myself in that category, you know, have a desire to always do well, to succeed, to maybe even overachieve. And, you know, how did you kind of conquer that, that idea that failure was an okay thing? Was that through experience or were you just really intentional with those thoughts? Um, I think that I learned how to be intentional with those thoughts. Um, I grew up in a family. I'm the youngest of four girls. Um, so I was always compared to another sibling, uh, whether it's with my parents or with the community itself. Um, I moved away from my hometown um, 
and I was the only sibling that moved away. So that change helped me to realize that I actually thrive in change. Um, Sarah Best, who is the most amazing creature on this earth, um, taught me about myself. And I think that was the biggest learning experience for me was going through a personality test um, or a personality analysis to learn what my characteristics mean. Um, I learned that I am outside of the spectrum of an introvert, or I'm sorry, an extrovert. Um, so I am the, the most extroverted person completely off the spectrum um, that you could be. So um, in a pandemic where you have to stay home, <laughs> um, that was really difficult for me um, and to not be around people. So I intentionally learned that my failures are my greatest learning opportunities. So Tasha, can you tell us a little bit about, you know, whether or not you identified some of the strategies you were doing during the pandemic were really, you know, building your resilience or was it just kind of something that happened organically? I wasn't necessarily conscious that I was building these strategies and I hadn't put a name to it, such as resilience. I utilized nature as my outlet to get through the pandemic uh, and nature has always been my source of happiness. So it was easy for me to continue on that path. And what was neat was seeing the tools that other per people used to persevere through the pandemic. That was inspiring to me. I live on South Main Street and I had joy every night because I would see entire families going down the street, walking together, the mom, the dad, the children, the dog, or whatever combination of people were in families. And so it was so neat and inspiring to see other people joining together and connecting together to get through the pandemic. Thank you. Thank you. And next we'll go to Sarah Miley. How intentional were you with your actions and did you recognize them at the time? I think it was a little bit of both. Um, I kind of had to form a resiliency plan about, oh, 12, 15 years ago. I had a very severe depression that I went through um, and through that, I learned an awful lot of things. I could probably talk about that for an hour, <laughs> but focusing it a little bit more for this. Um, one, a few things I learned were to trust in myself, um, you know, that whatever I thought might be a good idea, why not go try it? Just give it a shot. So I, maybe that's even a, a little bit related to not being afraid to fail, um, as Sarah was talking about. But Another thing that I have had to continuously reinstate is taking a little time for myself. Um, I am actually a little more introverted and I, my background is in journalism, so I love to write, <clears throat> excuse me. And it's important for me to make sure that I set a little time aside to connect with myself, whether it's prayer or whether it's writing a little bit, journaling, so that I can just even kind of process how I'm feeling or how I'm doing, what I'm doing, what everyone around me is doing. It just is important to take that time out to, you know, I think we get so busy. We just all have very busy lives in this day and age, but even as a mom, um, I have the tendency at times to kind of focus all my time on them. Like I need to take them here or they need this or we should all go for a walk together and I should take them to try this out. So uh, making sure not to forget about myself and continuing to grow myself, I think is very important. Um, I was also gonna add, I lost my mother unfortunately in February and you know, I was connecting with, Su was it Susan? Yes. <laughs> um, 
I appreciated what you shared on how you deal with your grief because I'm still kind of figuring it out. Um, but one thing I try to do is when I do achieve something like that I thought was going to be difficult or I do yoga every day. I think that helps me as well. Some, but when I when I make an achievement or sometimes after a yoga practice, I, I dedicate it to my mom. And so I just, that's a way that I feel like I can still connect with her. So that's all. <laughs> yeah, no, thank you for sharing that. And I, I think you provide a really good reminder too that while we were all dealing with or you know even continue to deal with the kind of global trauma of the pandemic it it didn't stop other life events from from happening and then having to experience some of those in a very different uh, environment and perhaps not being able to have you know those um connections or those uh, typical ways of even grieving, um, you know, it is a really good reminder that um, we all had those losses and those traumas kind of piling up on one another and on each and every one of right. us. So thank you for that reminder. And uh, Sarah, Miley, can you share with us a little bit about, you know, whether or not you ever identified the strategies and techniques you were using as being um, intentional to building this resiliency plan? Oh, well, sorry. I'm sorry, Sarah. You just answered. Sorry. And I, I, I guess I didn't answer that. Um, no, but that's okay. Some yes and some yeah. no. So. Okay. All right. <laughs> so Susan, sorry. My apologies. Can you respond to that question? Sure, absolutely. I don't think that I did think that I was um, setting up strategies for myself, but just building upon what Sarah Miley said is about taking time for yourself. Um, I take care of my mother half the year. My sister takes care of her the other half. She lives in Orlando, so she can have her diff during those cold, icy, snowy months. And um, I happened to get my mom at the beginning of March when I was supposed to get her at the end of April, only because an aunt passed away in Illinois. And I went to pick her up so that I could take her to the funeral. Um, and so then the pandemic hit, and here I am with my mom 24-7. Uh, which with someone with dementia and asking you the same question 15 times in a day can get very tiring. Um, so I did find that I just had to go off and be by myself. Sometimes it would be go down to the basement and clean because she didn't do stairs. Um, sometimes it would go for a walk, uh, maybe even go for a walk with my daughter with her dogs. Um, sometimes it was just sitting out on the patio um, but I didn't think in my mind, okay, I'm connecting with people. I'm taking time for myself. It wasn't something I listed in my mind, you know, only after you think back and, you know, 2020, um, it, hindsight is always perfect vision, you know, or hindsight, perfect 2020, whatever that saying is. Um, but yeah, so, but I do see it, you know, that I took time for myself. I did connect with others. Um, and, you know, kept in touch with, um, you know, God through devotions and things like that. But no, I don't, I don't think I thought it was a strategy, but it was, it was definitely what helped me. Great. So the reason I asked that question is kind of um, building off the next question I want to ask everybody. And Susan, I'm going to start with you and we'll work our way back. Um, but, you know, we're now in this virtual room with about 60 of us who are hearing all of these kind of amazing testimonials to strategies and techniques. I mean, we've talked about nature. We've talked about service to others. We've talked about spirituality. We've talked about yoga, journaling, exercise, um, connection to others. You know, we've, we've identified a lot of different approaches. And now some of us may be very inspired by the strategies and techniques all of you have laid out for us. So if, if somebody is feeling inspired by what you've shared, which I'm sure, you know, several of us are, what wisdom and piece of advice would you give somebody who's, you know, hearing some of these ideas for the first time um, to help them get started on that journey? So Susan, we'll start with you. 
Sure. Um, I think it's a, you definitely need an accountability partner. So whether that's your spouse, whether that's your a family member, whether that's a friend um, who will, you know, you can go to with your deepest thoughts, whether they're like, yeah, I just, you know, let's say you're dieting. I just ate three pieces of cake, you know, and they're not going to judge you over that. Or, you know, I haven't exercised for a week when I set out this plan to do that. Um, I, but I definitely think it's important that you have that accountability partner so that they can encourage you, they can build you up, but they can also give you tough love when you need it. Great. Thanks. So Sarah, Miley, what piece of wisdom or advice would you give somebody who is maybe going to be more intentional about their strategies for resiliency? I think it's important to find your joy. I mean, I, we've had a lot of ideas discussed here, a um, lot of different things to try if, if there are some that you haven't, but finding out what fills your cup. Like when you try different things, I think certain things will click for you and feel like they replenish you and certain things won't. I mean, certain people might have no interest whatsoever in journaling but when they start going out in the woods and taking a walk or hitting the yoga mat a few times, they might realize, wow, I feel, I feel pretty refreshed after this. I think I'm gonna do this some more. So just real, like taking the, having the mindfulness to really think about like, how did this make me feel after you try it? Great. And Sarah Sable, um, you know, certainly inspired by all of your, <laughs> physical activity and exercise, but there's probably few of us that are going to start out being, a, you know, an endurance athlete. So what, you know, wisdom or words of advice would you give somebody who, you know, wants to start on that journey? Um, well, I started uh, my journey in 2018. I was 75 pounds overweight and couldn't walk a mile without stopping. Um, so once I started um, being able to even run a mile, um, I remember calling my mom once I ran around the big reservoir in Finley, which is 4.33 miles and um, crying because I had never been able to achieve anything um, of that distance before without stopping and walking. Um, so, for me, I like to keep a beginner mindset no matter what, uh, no matter what level I'm at. So I, I call myself an amateur endurance athlete and I like to keep the emphasis on amateur because I am learning. We're all learning. Um, I think even, you know, the most elite of the endurance athletes are still learning. And by keeping the beginner mindset that, um, you know, at, at any point I could be not able to walk a mile. Um, what do I need to learn each and every day uh, to be able to continue on this growth path that I'm on currently? Great, thank you. And Tasha, what are your words of wisdom and advice for somebody wanting to get started enjoying nature? Absolutely create your own path. Um, so each of us is coming from our unique experience. Take inspirations that speak to you, but experiment and play with everything and then take steps toward your true happiness. The pandemic has been an opportunity to find out who you truly are and what we're certainly made of. Dig deep to find your personal superpower, whether it's nature or, or something else. It is unique only to you. Um, there was a quotation that I found that I wanted to make sure that I shared by John Muir. Of all the paths you take in life, make sure a few of them are dirt. Thank you. That's a great quote. I love John Muir's quotes. Um, I, I think too that it reminds us to focus on, you know, like what Sarah said too about not necessarily being afraid to fail. Um, or to try new things, that we certainly can um, be a beginner at something, and that's okay, and we can try something for a little bit, and then move on and try something different, 
and that there's um, still benefit in that. And I think that the really powerful thing about resiliency is it's not just something that we only have a, a certain capacity for, right? Our, our resilience can grow and develop over time and you know evolve as our life circumstances evolve as well. So I'm curious, and I'm gonna start Tasha with you, you know, how do you believe, or do you believe that your resiliency has developed over time? Um, has it gotten stronger over time? And, you know, what all do you credit for that development? I think the biggest challenge through the pandemic for me, so again, Life was fairly easy through the pandemic for me because I was able to still enjoy the things I truly love, which is being in nature and all of those activities that I've mentioned. The hardest part for me was the kind of grief and loss of friends and, sorry, <laughs> loved ones. You know, my husband and I made a commitment that we would you know, follow the stay at home orders and keep in our household and things like that. And it has been so hard not to be connected to our friends and loved ones. Um, you know, Christmas over Zoom, thanks, but you know, <laughs> it was really hard. And we usually go on this backpacking trip with our friends and we went with just each other. We usually go on a canoeing trip with friends and we went with just each other. Um, it did build my resilience in the sense that um, my husband and I were newlyweds at the time during the pandemic and it really got us closer together and we developed a partnership together because you know, even though we weren't off in the Alaskan wilderness or anything like that, um, we still had, you know, we were in the woods without access to the car. We were going down rapids in a canoe and if anything happened, it was on us. So I really build a resilience with uh, my husband and partner in life. And so that was unique to the pandemic. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Sarah Sable, how do you think your resiliency has evolved over time and, um, you know, what all do you contribute to that growth? This is a very complicated question for me. Um, I would say the, the smallest steps forward have made the greatest strides forward, if that makes sense at all. Um, time is going to pass no matter what we do. Um, so for me, I think that I started off this, having this goal of, you know, we, we all learn to have a smart goal, right? So it has to be specific. It has to be measurable. Um, it has to be achievable. It has to be time relevant. Um, but, but that time is going to pass no matter what. So if you have a goal that's six months down the road and you get one month in and you say, oh, well, I still have four, five months and I, I'm not anywhere closer to that, that five months is still going to come and go. And then six months down the road, you're going to say, oh, well, that feeling of failure on that end of it is much deeper to me than any small failure along the way of not being able to achieve it. Um, if I have a race that I'm working towards, I'm currently training to run hundred miles in 24 hours. Um, that's in September. I started this training in January. If I didn't make the small steps every single day towards September, September is gonna come anyway. <laughs> and then on that date, I'm gonna say, oh, well, today's the day I should have run be running hundred miles. And that, that failure, hits way deeper to me than any small failure that I have in my training. So kind of about how you keep perspective on things. Right. Yes. That's yes. Much better way. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks. Um, Sarah, Miley, how do you think that your resilience has grown and developed over time? I think that it's grown quite a bit through the pandemic. Um, since I 
started my new position last March. You know, I think a job change is a big transition no matter what. Um, before that, I was working as an aide in the preschool at St. Michael's School. So going from that to kind of more of an office position that has a lot of writing and networking and busyness, um, it was a big change. I mean, that's what I wanted. That was kind of closer to what I used to do when I was a reporter for a newspaper, but I, it was a change I was ready for. Um, and then, you know, this, I'm gonna have to give you a little background on the United Way. Um, we, our goal was to build this volunteer center because when I took the role, it was for that reason, to build something that had kind of lost its spark. So we've, we've wanted to become a hub for volunteering in the community and bring a personal touch back to what we're offering here. So, because this was completely new, I was building something from the ground up. Like there wasn't anyone for me to talk to when I came in who said, this is how we do things. This is the, what we're doing. I just have been creating it. And <clears throat> I think that that sounded very exciting to me when I took the position and then the pandemic happened and there was this mostly working from home, but then, you know, going into the office sometimes and learning different ways to try to reach out to volunteers and to help with the kinds of projects that were coming across my desk because with the pandemic, a lot of needs did come up like with the um, health department and just at, at various agencies that we serve. So that was a little bit difficult because I find I found myself stressing out like how am I going to do this like I don't even know what I'm doing and I'm home. <laughs> um, also, we between the technology needs that we've all had to, you know, we've had to increase our skills here. We had a lot of different technology changes within our workplace like we kept changing softwares and we were upgrading this and that and I that is very hard for me that's not my favorite technology. <laughs> so kind of kind of like what Sarah said, I just kept trying to tell myself, you know what you want this to be, it's going to get better. You just have to keep fighting through this. And so I, I felt that having confidence in myself that eventually I would get through all these changes, whether it was trying to figure out how to work from home or trying to learn how to use this new software. I, I just felt like there would be a time down in the future that things would be running smoothly. And fortunately, we're getting there. I feel like um, things are really coming together with my position. It's been nice that we've been in person at work, but um, I think through that process, I had to let go a little bit from I'm, I'm a little bit of a perfectionist, so I had to let go of some of the perfection and just make sure I always stayed positive and kept up my faith in both above and myself. Um, and with the resiliency, I think, you know, having that awareness of what am I, you know, not letting it pass without a little celebration. Hey, I actually got volunteers for this event or wow, I figured out how to use this. I mean, make a big deal out of, of your small successes so that you can build upon them and, and stay positive. Okay, thanks. And Susan, how do you think your endurance is a, a your resilience, excuse me, I got stuck on uh, the, the words that kept coming to my mind as Sarah was talking was endurance and perseverance. <laughs> um, but for Susan, how do you think that your resilience has grown and developed and evolved over time? Um, for me, I think it's just, I'm learning from my mistakes. So I'm kind of like Sarah, I'm a perfectionist. I'm really hard on myself when I make a mistake and I will try to beat myself up for days about it. Um, and believe me when I say I've had five children, I'll be 60 this year. I've made a lot of mistakes over my life. And so it's just about what, 
is the major thing I can learn from that mistake and, and really focusing on that. And then finding a plan for, okay, how can I change what I did or how I felt? What new perspective can I learn so that I don't make that mistake again? Because sometimes your mistakes hurt others and sometimes they hurt yourself. Um, and sometimes they hurt everyone, I guess, but it's just, you know, looking at it, evaluating, and then what can I learn from that? And then what can I change to make it better? Jenny, I'm going to interject here for just a moment and just share that we're nearing the end. So okay. we'll just let you know. Okay, so perfect timing, because my last question is one even for um, everybody watching to kind of participate in. And some of the, you know, literature on resilience talks about the five pillars of resilience, and that those are self-awareness, self-care, purpose, mindfulness, and positive relationships. And the idea that we can build our resilience by even honing in and focusing on one of those pillars to try something new, to, you know, to make a commitment to expand that pillar for ourselves. So I want to like work through our panelists, but I'm a big believer in that if we can name it, we can manage it, manage it kind of approach. And I think somebody also mentioned like the power of an accountability partner, but I'd encourage everybody who's watching even to put in the chat, like which one of those pillars do you feel at this time that you could commit to doing something small to improve upon or to add something into your world to make that pillar a little bit stronger for yourself? So I'll start with Susan, like which one of those pillars could you see yourself kind of adding to, even though, you know, obviously we've heard about your resilience and your strength and everything um, that you do to, to be strong and to have that resiliency, but is there something that speaks to you with one of those pillars where you think, oh, I could add to that one? Um, definitely personal relationship because, you know, before the pandemic, I did volunteer um, at different um, for different nonprofits, and I've kind of let that go throughout the pandemic. And so that's really something I want to get back involved in, um, and not just having personal relationships that benefit me. You know, looking towards personal relationships that I can invest in. Um, so that's probably what I would look to try to improve upon. Okay. What about Sarah Miley? I have to agree. I think that if there's, well, I, I feel like personal relationships have suffered a little bit for me through the pandemic um, with staying at home or just having to stay away from people because maybe they're quarantining or maybe you're quarantining or just it, you know, more of these um, not in-person meetings. And I think that kind of, as I mentioned before, have making sure it's important for me to set a little time aside for myself, um, making sure that I'm trying a little bit more to set time aside with my own friends or I, I have a tendency to really do a lot of things with my kids. <laughs> so to reach back out to my network and, and get to enjoy that again, I think is important for me to focus on. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, Sarah Sable. Um, I love the purpose one. Um, I think that the, the biggest thing that everyone who has a goal has to reflect on is why. And that's not in that smart kind of goal setting, right? Um, why do you wanna achieve this? And if you reflect on that why and keep it at the front of, the, of every single day to remind yourself that this is why I'm doing this, um, you know, and even get in deeper with the five whys, right? So ask yourself, once you, once you identify one reason why, then say, well, why is that? And do that five times and that really gets to that bottom reason of 
down to your core why you want to achieve something. At, at your darkest, deepest moments, um, that's exactly what's going to bring that light to it. Um, so I think that purpose column um, is, is huge for me. And when somebody asks me why I run, I don't know. I don't know why. So that's a big one for me. Thank you. Um, Tasha, what pillar do you see yourself enhancing? Purpose. I believe purpose is at the root of everything that we do. It's like a tree and everything grows from there. So when you find your purpose, when you're connected to your purpose, everything flows from there. Great, thank you. I also wanna express, I, I think, a, a very sincere and appreciative thank you to all the panelists in terms of the personal vulnerability that you shared um, with your experiences and the journey that you've had throughout life and during the pandemic. I think that that's also a thing that binds us all together, you know, is that sometimes um, we're a little more reluctant to share some of those experiences. And I think that there's a lot of power that happens in sharing those openly because they're definitely, um, you know, part of what makes us who we are and where we gain some of that strength from. So thank you to everybody. And Dion, I can turn it back over to you if you've got some other wrap up things to do, but thank you all for sharing. Thank you. Jenny, thank you so much for, still, for facilitating our panel and special thanks for Julie for coming into our lives with helping us to identify our themes this year. So appreciative to her and Sarah, Tasha, Sarah and Susan, thank you for sharing about yourself and, and just being you. I feel like we're just a great um, circle of friends this morning. And in fact, if we can just replicate this every morning, I will have a great day every single morning. I just, I think it just emphasizes the, the purpose of today's program is all about connections. And that was talked about earlier on. So today's Women's Mentoring Connection, I hope it provided some insight for you. And I encourage you to follow up follow us along the Chambers Women's Leadership Group for more programming. And again, I encourage you to follow up with the panelists one-on-one -on -one if you have anything you'd like to um, chat with them about as well. I'm sure they would be open to that. So ladies, as we end our program today, the question that we started with was, what is your personal superpower? So I encourage you, take some time for yourself today, even if it's just a couple of minutes, and kind of sit with that and try and answer that for yourself. So with that, I will leave you. And I enjoyed spending the time this morning together. Thanks again to our panelists and facilitator. And we will see you next time. Thank you.